Todd leaves Conan, and they follow Dave, and then Conan ends up going by himself to his 10th anniversary special. I fucking love that. That was the best. And I also wanted to note, I don't know if any of you guys know this, but I was totally excited for this, but it never happened. I'm talking about Wayne's World 2. David Lee Roth filmed an entire scene for Wayne's World 2 with Mike Myers and Dana Carvey. Left on the cutting room floor, never made it to the movie, and never made it to the DVD. Who also did this too was Peter Frampton. He was also left out of the movie. But I was always dying to hear about that. And I actually asked Dave about it. And he goes, ah, it was just Hayes, Diamond Dave kind of thing, you know. But I was like so upset because I had heard that it happened. And then when I went to see the movie, it wasn't in the movie. And then when I got the DVD, it wasn't on the DVD as an extra. And I was like, what the fuck? So what is your favorite, <laughs> Dave? What is your favorite? You no, know, I can't top that story, <laughs> to, be, <laughs> to be honest with you. Oh, uh, that's okay. No big deal. I got nothing after that. Oh, nothing. Okay. Letter number 13 comes from Johnny Rogers from California. California, and he says here, I heard Dave's retirement speech a couple weeks ago, and I just thought that Dave knows when it's time for Dave to hang it up. And I understood. It made sense to me at the time. Then my friend told me that his interpretation was Dave might be sick, and he might be forced into retirement. Went back to listen to it again, and thought there may be something there. What do you guys think? He also told me Alex is going to play with David in Vegas, but I researched it and saw no evidence of that. I also want to show my appreciation to Wolfgang Van Halen for getting Dave and Eddie back together for three amazing tours and amazing set list and an amazing album a different kind of truth johnny rogers from california yes well we talked about this in van halen news of course we hope dave's not sick i personally think it's just a physical condition situation in terms of his back and his muscles he doesn't want to really keep pushing it in regards to that i think dave knows when to bow out and maybe it's time so in that he didn't want to you know keep going with the rigors of the road probably why i didn't continue with kiss as well it's another answer as to to why he wasn't opening for Kiss on this leg of the tour. Now, what do you say, Dave? Guy's just had enough, and, you know, he's done. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's just done. Whatever he's got going on doesn't mean it's life-threatening. Just mm-hmm. means makes touring that much more difficult, and that's it. Yeah. Letter number 14 comes from Eric Torbick, known as our perfect letter writer, and he says, What's up, guys? A little bit of a different question this month. How would you rank the following animated TV slash movie Van Halen references? Better Off Dead, Everybody Wants Some, Minions, Eruption, South Park, Park ain't talking about love and family guy panama although panama kicks too much ass i have to go with south park reference what do you guys say so i definitely definitely love family guy as my all-time favorite i think that's so funny although the south park one is right underneath it where they're united under one symbol and it's the van halen symbol that that is just so fucking funny i think that's hysterical better off dead is kudos to that because they got the shark guitar in there to match everybody wants some era which is really cool and that's sort of an old school thing and minions was fun too but i'm definitely family guy is my favorite because i love the way they talk on family guy i think that panama just kicks way too much ass i love that so what about you dave i think i'll have to rate it better off dead followed by south park followed by family guy followed by Minions. okay and our last letter of the night which is dave's favorites one came in this morning from cj thisme from queens and he says here a little critical dave dave listen to this i want I wanted to say that I love the podcast and enjoy your back and forth banter, but the last episode was a bit of a letdown. While the interview with Mitch Malloy and Pete Thorne was fantastic and the Van Halen news and mailbag segments were spot on, I can't help but be disappointed in Quiet Dave dropping the ball on his episode 69 lack of reveal. It made me think, why is Quiet Dave so quiet? What is he hiding? He seems elusive and very guarded. Was it the way in which he was deflowered or who deflowered him please shed some light on this man who should really be nicknamed the riddler (laughs) i know dave has been setting the stage for this for a long time but dave also knows i do not talk about my personal life never mind on a podcast but with people who don't need to know so to be honest, I really don't know why Dave set me up for that because he knew he wasn't going to get anything. So, you know, if you want to have a beer with me one night and you get me drunk enough, well, good luck at But that's all there is to it. My life is my business. And, and when it comes to uh, something that involves somebody else, I'm just not sharing that with everybody. Sorry, people. Well, 
I want to tell our listeners that I tried yet again. So this was a second attempt to try to get Dave to reveal CJ Thisme from Queens is me, Dave. And I was trying to get you. <laughs> I was wondering why that it wasn't on the preview. <laughs> Well, listen. You never give up, do you? You never give up. Hey, you never hear the expression by hook or by crook? Yeah, well, <laughs> good luck to you, my friend. Love you very much. Oh, but you come should on. drop it. Why'd you say what? I said I love you very much, but you should drop it. All right, I'm going to drop it. At least that was a little bit of a bow out there. But come on. It's, just, it's funny. Just a little laugh. <laughs> just a little giggle. A little giggle. Well, that wraps up the mailbag segment. And we are on to our interview with Michael Christopher. He is the author of Van Halen, The Eruption and the Aftershock. And it is the new book that's coming out. And it is all about the entire Van Halen history, including the David Lee Roth years, the Sammy Hagar years, Gary Sharon time, and the reunion with Wolf. And everything is encompassed in this book. Michael gets into crazy little minute details about all these lots of lots of little nuggets in this book from all over the eras really 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 cool little details that we discuss kind of mine the book for these interesting little nuggets and dave and i kind of chewed the fat with him on them it was really a lot of fun that is coming up next take a listen man i tell you this kid we, we jammed badass tune the other day he is so creative. It is ridiculous. It's, he's just a natural beyond anyone I've ever met. And this is not his dad talking. I'm talking as a producer, as a musician. He wants to play double kick, okay? So I set him up a week and a half ago. Then he wants a cowbell, okay? So I bring over a cowbell. Anyway, four or five days go by, and he goes, Dad, let's jam. It's like he's been, been playing double kick all his, all his damn life. And don't forget, he only started making music when he was 10. And he's only 12. He plays bass better than a lot of people I know. <laughs> I started making music when I was six, playing piano, okay? But I didn't start rock and roll or playing guitar or drums till I was 12. By 14, I wasn't like him. And he doesn't practice. He just started. He goes, Daddy, I've been practicing. I go, yeah, all right. I gave him four guitar lessons, and he played in front of his whole school flawlessly and he only practiced for an hour he's never played guitar before four lessons now drums i, I just recorded it on one of those little uh, radio shack micro cassette things i played it for al for alex yesterday because alex and i we, we play every day we jam you know and write and whatever i played it for al he's going my god i can't believe it he's going he's just born with it you know hello loyal listeners Wanted to let you know about our new Patreon. If you like what we do and you have the means, drop us a donation to keep the podcast going. Go to patreon.com backslash ddunchained. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash d-d-u-n-c-h-a-i-n-e-d. Doesn't have to be huge. Any side's contributions are greatly appreciated. Those who contribute $40 or more will get the Unchained package. Trust me, it's worth it. Contribute $65 or more and get the Romeo Delight package, which is Unchained plus more. And $95 scores you the Top Jimmy package, which is the Kitchen Sink. If you're a Van Halen hardcore and listen to this cast, this is stuff you'll appreciate. It's ear candy. Go to patreon.com backslash Unchained. Email your contact information to ddunchainedpodcast at gmail.com. What is understood need not be discussed. If you would like to send us a letter asking a question or making a statement or whatever you'd like to say, you can send it to ddunchainedpodcast at gmail.com. Hey, this is Pete Thorne, and you are listening to Dave and Dave Unchained. Pick up the new book, Eruption, Conversations with Eddie Van Halen, by Brad Tolinsky and Chris Gill. These music journalists share with fans, new and old alike, a candid, compulsively readable and definitive oral history 
of the most influential rock guitarist since Jimi Hendrix. It is based on more than 50 hours of unreleased interviews they recorded with Eddie Van Halen over the years, most of them conducted at the legendary 5150 Studios at Ed's home in Los Angeles. The heart of Eruption is drawn from these intimate and wide-ranging talks, as well as conversations with family, friends, and colleagues. In addition to discussing his greatest triumphs as a groundbreaking musician, including an unprecedented dive into Van Halen's masterpiece 1984, the book also takes an unflinching look at Edward's early struggles as a young Dutch immigrant unable to speak the English language, which resulted in lifelong issues with social anxiety and substance abuse. Eruption, Conversations with Eddie Van Halen, also examines his brilliance as an investor who changed the face of guitar manufacturing. Eruption, Conversations with Eddie Van Halen. Get your copy today on Amazon.com. Martin Popoff here. Hope you're enjoying this latest episode of Dave and Dave Unchained, the wise swamis on all things VH. Just wanted to remind you that at martinpopoff.com, I've got two Van Halen books that I wrote. Uh, One is Van Halen, a visual biography, which is basically a big hardcover coffee table book, 400 images, 20,000 word detailed timeline. And the other one is called Unchained, a Van Halen user manual. It's the uh, sort of 120,000 word, very academic, a lot of crazy chapters, a lot of trivia, a wordy book uh, that I did on Van Halen. So yes, uh, go to martinpopoff.com. I sign and ship those out of my office here in Toronto. There's PayPal buttons for the US, international and Canada. Again, Van Halen, a visual biography and Unchained, a Van Halen user manual. Back to Dave and Dave. What we do, it's rock and roll, but it comes from the heart, you know? It's, it's really a soulful kind of thing. I mean, it's, it's, it's our lives, you know? We, we, we play music, it's all we do. It's like, we'll, we'll be on the road for 10 months and come home and go, I need a break. After a week and a half, Al and I are calling each other going, Come on, man, we've got to play. This is the only thing we know how to do or the only thing we like to do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that's really the root of it. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an incredible guest this evening. He is the author of a new Van Halen book, The Eruption and the Aftershock. It is Michael Christopher. Michael, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Happy to have you. Congratulations on the book. You did a great job. Michael did a very difficult job here in the sense that he encompassed Van Halen's entire history in one book, which is not an easy task. So I wanted to ask you, Michael, why don't you give us a little bit about your Van Halen background? Are you a fan of the band? Did you grow up listening to the band? Yeah, I did. I was introduced at a really young age to the band by an uncle of mine who's fairly close in age. He turned me on to women and children first, and from there it was just all systems go. I was a fan from then on through both eras, the main primary eras, of course, and you know, even through the, the Gary era. I mean, I, I saw that tour, I don't know how many times. It was just a great time to be alive when, when Van Halen was on the earth sharing the, the same atmosphere, you know? Absolutely. We totally agree with you. Tell me about this project. When did you start getting the idea to do this? Was it before Eddie's passing? Was it after? How did the whole thing start? I had been working on it off and on for a couple years. Whenever I would do interviews, I would say, hey, you know, I'm going to be working on a Van Halen book at some point, and can we talk about that band? And of course, you know, the artists that I'm I'm conversing with, they always wanted to talk about Van Halen. I mean, you rarely find somebody that, that doesn't have an opinion on the band or doesn't want to talk about them. You know, when it got closer to, I really have something here, then Eddie passes, and it created a, a, a more impetus behind it where I, I wanted to tell the story of Van Halen now that it had an end point. And as sad as that is, it's true. We're never going to be able to see them in concert again. Right. Never get to look forward to a new studio album. Mm-hmm. And, and rarely writing books of this nature do you have that option. It's either a complete retrospective or my last book I did on Depeche Mode, that's tricky to wrap up because there's still an existing entity that's moving forward. And with Van Halen, the eruption and the aftershock, it ends with the passing of Eddie. It just says the band did. It doesn't go in the Wolfgang solo career, Dave's solo gigs, or, or speculating on demos or anything like that that we might see released down the line. It ends with, with Eddie's passing. 
So what was your research process with the book? How did you go about putting it together? It seems like there was a million little pieces that you were working with, which is a very tricky business to do. And what kind of interviews did you conduct in the process? Researching it is... 